Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 7 of the anime series, Gabrielle Dropout. <laughs> and finally, I get an episode that focuses solely on Vine. I can actually put her in the thumbnail and <laughs> everything like that. I was thinking that as I was watching this episode. Finally, I get to put Vine in the thumbnail. Uh, she is my second favorite character. For a while there, she was kind of my top favorite, but Satania has completely won me over as my favorite character for this show. And I like that in, in a sense we dialed back Satania a bit for this episode just to give Vine a little bit more of the spotlight and uh, it's it's kind of starting out you think it's going to be back and forth between Vine and Gabrielle herself because both of them oh heavens are finding out their stipends from heaven and hell are <laughs> being depleted they're not getting as much money as they ought to be because of course Gabrielle is not acting angelic at all and she really couldn't give a crap about it <laughs> you know like she's kind of upset that she's out of money but she's not going to go to any means to try to fix this. She's just living her sort of uh, uh, enclosed, lazy bum gamer lifestyle. <laughs> she's just going about her business doing that, getting to school late and everything like that, not doing her homework. And so that's it. You know, you can't really save Gabrielle at this point. And Vine, Vine is, as we're seeing, like her daily routine it is a routine, uh, from getting up at a specific time to having a specific breakfast to going out and doing specific things. It's her day off, and she's got a whole outline planned of how she's going to enjoy her day to the fullest, have every moment occupied, and then, like, when she goes home afterwards, she writes it all down in a diary, uh, even down to the ingredients of the breakfast and, and lunch and what she had and all this kind of stuff. I mean, it's kind of sort of insane. On her day off, of all things, too, uh, uh, from school, she's doing nothing demonic. I mean, she is the most heartwarming character. <laughs> You know, she's supposed to be from hell. Satania, at least, has kind of sort of the right idea. You know, she's boasting all the time, even though she does ridiculous things to try to be evil as well, from not picking up recycling to all that kind of stuff, like just stupid things. I, I, I have to wonder how well off or how more well off Satania is with all the things she's at least trying to do something. She's giving it the old college try, you know, as they say. Whereas Vine, she's just, she's not. She's much more befitting the angelic outline than any of the actual angels, Gabrielle or Raphael, <laughs> in this show. And uh, it's kind of funny. She ends up back at the coffee shop. We see our wonderful <laughs> coffee shop owner guy again, this poor put-upon guy, who now confronted with Vine again, the, the one person who really solely appreciates all of his efforts, uh, you know, in maintaining his coffee and breeding his coffee and doing all this stuff, uh, having uh, just, you know, the, the sort of uh, uh, intrinsic brew that he has concocted after so many years, you know, perfection test after perfection test. Here's the girl who <laughs> inspires him, in a sense, to keep going after running into the likes of Gabrielle, who <laughs> almost ruined his whole world, and Satania, who almost helped, you know, and then he goes over, you know, realizing she's kind of in a dark mood, she's mulling things over, what's what's wrong, can I help, you know, he wants to be <laughs> sort of bountiful and beneficial to her. Lo and behold, she asks him flat out, can you help me figure out how to do bad deeds, how to do bad things? <laughs> it's like lightning strikes this guy all over again. The good girl. No, not the good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why does she have to be the one to to want to know how to do bad things? And like he's giving all these like, oh, I, I was a rebel back in the day. You know, they called me uh, such and such Buddha face and, and this and that Buddha face. <laughs> yeah, Buddha, like one of the the most iconic non-violent, non-evil uh, visages created by a man in the history of humanity. Yeah, he, he's Buddha face. You know, and so he's coming up with. All <laughs> these different things. Oh, well, maybe you could skip school. Maybe you could uh, not, you know, like, leave, leave a pen flicked out uh, uh, rather than closing it up again and all, all this kind of stuff. Don't take notes in class because, you know, maybe it'd be a little too extreme to skip to skip class <laughs> and all this stuff. And Vine, of course, she's making every best effort, but it's, like, ridiculous. Um, you know, oh, oh, her fashion, her attire, she's not gonna tie up her tie straight. She's gonna wear baggy clothes. She's not gonna close up her her top buttons on her shirt she's gonna wear baggy socks and everything and look unkempt that's the best she can do to be evil she's gonna look unkempt 
Gabrielle comes walking up right behind her and she's like, oh, I can't wait for her to notice. And Gabrielle is actually looking exactly the same herself. In fact, she's even sleepy eyed. She doesn't notice. She keeps walking back. Three day. Let's get to school already. And then, and then she throws out that line. Oh, this line will be the one to sink it, man. She'll know where I'm coming from. She'll know where simpatico as far as not doing angelic things. Bad to the bone. <laughs> Only Vina is like, Vina, the way she says it is like, uh, bad to the bone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I, I love Vina. She's absolutely hilarious. Again, second favorite character in this series. And I just feel bad for her, too, because she ends up concocting a cold and, like, you know, this lays her out. And I was starting to wonder, because she didn't notice any change in her stipend after doing all these things and making all these attempts to be demonic and evil and all this stuff. Uh, I started to wonder if we were going to cap off the episode with her being sick and staying out of school and not, you know, keeping up with her homework and everything like that. And of course, Raphael and, and Satania come over once again with the dog in the melon bun, stealing the melon bun, which this time Satania claims she brought for Vina. But then Gabrielle as well, they all come over. Gabrielle's drawn cat faces on her while she's asleep and trying to count Cerberi, uh, little Cerberus dogs and, and things. And then Gabrielle as well, because she's trying to think of what, what do humans actually count when they're trying to go to sleep? Not sheep, obviously. I mean, that would be too obvious. That would hit the nail two on the head. You know, we're going to think of little Gabrielles. We're going to be lazy and pile up just like the Cerberi did. Um, and it's, I, I, I really had it in mind at that point. Okay, here's where we're going to actually get a swing in the other direction. Rather than, oh, Gabrielle actually did come over and bring food and, and did have Karen concern for Vina being sick, uh, rather than being selfish, wanting her to do her homework for her, which was also part and parcel of it. I thought, okay, at the end, we're going to get a, a final sort of nail in the coffin joke that now that Vina has been sick and she hasn't been able to go to school, you know, not entirely a, a, of her volition at all, just because she's fallen ill, maybe this would actually up her stipend a little bit more. And then we don't actually call back to that at all. You know, uh, I, I really thought that was going to be the final joke. <laughs> you know, basically, oh, I've done nothing because I've been sick. So somehow it works to my favor, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but she was just glad that Gabrielle actually did come over with some meaningful, uh, uh, you know, bringing stuff to hopefully get her eating and get her healthy and everything. Whereas the other girls, they just wanted a day off and, and hang out and play games and stuff like that. And I love how each shot, you know, I, I mean, it kicks them all out one by one. But then, of course, she calls Gabrielle, I guess, to thank her after the fact. And uh, we'll no doubt get a, an earful about will you please do my homework for me <laughs> all over again and so it was awesome it was awesome having an episode focused mostly on Vinay uh who is my second much beloved character from this anime and it, it just calls into question that much more because I love as I've said many times this back and forth dynamic of the angels are much more evil seeming or falling to that side the demons <laughs> I mean, Satania, she's a go-getter. She's trying, but she's not really amounting to much. And Vina is the opposite. She, she's kind of heartwarming, angelic, and all these things. I almost have to wonder if we're going to see, like, at least I would hope it would go this way. Toward the end, like, there would be a, an added punch of they've flopped sides, you know? <laughs> like, maybe the heavens are looking down and watching all of this, and, and they pick up, you know, Vina and Satania and say, you know, you, you girls are actually good girls. Why don't you come up here? And then, <laughs> alternatively, Gabrielle and Raphael, they're ba-boom, down below, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, I have no idea. Maybe not. Probably not. I mean, I did think this episode was going to end with one more stipend joke and they didn't go that way in a couple episodes previous it didn't end the way I thought it was going to uh, uh, with the particular joke I thought they were going to be going for so it's really hard to tell uh, if that's even going to enter the framework if we're going to even see Vina, you know like rise to an angelic level or not that kind of thing uh, uh, but she is the most angelic really of any of the characters and uh for that i love her to pieces again satania though takes the win as far as being the most interesting the most hilarious the most put upon making her endearing uh because she keeps going in spite of being the butt of all these other characters jokes time and time and time again and uh great series overall great episode once again and i'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of this particular episode of gabrielle dropout if you've seen it as well if you appreciated much as i did that we had 
had a, a, an entire episode focused very much on Vinay kind of getting away from the vignette format a little bit as well in doing so. Uh, I, I think we still had a little bit of that, you know, themology in each different scene we saw Vinay in, but because she was the main focus, it felt less and lesser so than just a, a you know, a bunch of skits put together that didn't really have much to do with each other. Um, it, it was all overarching Vinay's episode. So I thought that was awesome, gangbusters. And uh, yeah, love it or hate it. I'd love to have the conversation in the comments below, as I would love to do. Otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.